All right. So, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. And in this particular video lecture, we are going to talk about the protein synthesis inhibitors or translational inhibitors. Translational inhibitors or protein synthesis inhibitors of prokaryotes. Because uh, we as a eukaryotic organism uh, are being affected by proka prokaryotic organisms like bacteria. So, the prokaryotic organisms, they infect us, so we need to kill them. And we use different mechanism to kill them. Protein synthesis inhibitor is a category of drugs, category of antibiotics that kill the prokaryotic organisms by preventing their protein synthesis or preventing the translation process. They will interfere with the pro prokaryotic translation only, not with the eukaryotic translation. So eukaryotic translation means in our case, it's not going to cause any impact. It is only going to impact the bacteria, the prokaryotes. Now, how exactly this translational inhibition works? Uh, to understand that, I'll tell you the simple steps of the protein synthesis in prokaryotes. Not everything, just very, very basic few things. Because in order to understand the mechanism of protein synthesis inhibitors, you need to know the protein synthesis as a very basic overview. And for that, what I'll tell you is that for protein synthesis, we have an mRNA. The mRNA should be present. The mRNA has a 5 prime end to 3 prime end. And the directionality of protein synthesis is 5 prime to 3 prime of the uh, mRNA. And uh, what we have, we have the large ribosomal subunit. We have a small ribosomal subunit. Means uh, bacteria have this. And uh, what else they have? They have this, uh, this tRNA, uh, the tRNA. And three places for the tRNA to attach to the ribosome. So what I can uh, share here is that three nucleotide together termed as a codon. Or okay, so three nucleotide in every single case is possible here, like this codon. Okay, and there is a start codon to initiate where we initiate the process of protein synthesis, and there is a stop codon. Okay, again triplet code where we end the process of protein synthesis. Okay, start and stop codon. And the ribosomal subunit will slide along the mRNA from 5 prime to the 3 prime direction. It slides along from 5 prime to the 3 prime direction. And during this movement, uh, they start with the start codon, ends in the stop codon. And the process completes in the stop codon. And what else they have? They have tRNA. They have tRNAs in it. Okay. So let me draw tRNA like this, tRNA. Now the important uh, feature about the tRNA is that uh, the tRNA carries amino acid. It carries an amino acid. tRNA carries amino acid. Now what about this amino acid that is attached to the tRNA is that tRNA has an anticodon. This is anticodon. This is anticodon of... Uh, anticodon region of the tRNA. This is amino acid attached to the tRNA. Now we can see the codons that are present and what else do you need to know is that this tRNA, there is a specific tRNA for every single amino acid. There are 20 essential amino acids and for all the 20 essential amino acids, there are 20 tRNAs that are present. One tRNA for every single amino acid types. Okay. Now, apart from that, what else we need to understand is uh, the process. The process is that the tRNA brings am, uh, amino acid, right? And then the next tRNA brings another amino acid. Let me draw it here. This is one amino acid. This is another amino acid. Now, between these two amino acid, they will be forming a peptide bond. A peptide bond formation is done. And in this fashion, continuous amino acids will be stitched together like this as a polypeptide chain okay and the site where the process take place there are three different site E site P site and A site in the ribosomal subunits okay E site P site and A site in the ribosomal subunit A site is the place where the newly charged tRNA means tRNA with amino acid brings itself P site is where the after the process of polypeptidation is done, a peptidyl transfer is activity is done, the polypeptide chain is created, it is hold on to this P site of the tRNA. And last is the E or E site. E site again is a place 
where the tRNA exits after the peptide gets cleaved. Once the polypeptide is fully synthesized, it is cleaved and after that the tRNA, free tRNA is released. It is released out. Okay, that is how the whole process is done. This is how it is regulated. Okay, so now for all this process to know the steps of this is that the assembly of 50s and 30s subunits, this is 50s ribosomal subunit, this is 30s ribosomal subunit, right? And then reading of the mRNA is very important. So obviously ribosome association, ribosome association, okay, reading mRNA, reading of the mRNA is another very important part, reading of the mRNA, okay, reading of the mRNA is done. And after the reading of the mRNA, what else uh, step is there? Polypeptidation or peptidyl transferase activity. So this is one, this is two, this is uh, peptidyl transferase. Peptidyl transferase activity. Peptidyl transferase activity is in there. Okay. So after the peptidyl transferase activity, next is the migration of the ribosome that is known as translocation translocation that is migration of the ribosome one codon unit apart so ribosome always move from 5 prime to the 3 prime of the mrna line uh, from one codon unit to the next codon unit from one codon unit to the next codon unit like this okay so the antibiotics that we design they target some of these important steps that I have discussed. So, this peptidyl transfer is third, translocation is fourth. So, any of these activities, if blocked by some antibiotics, then it is going to prevent the process of protein synthesis in prokaryotes, in bacteria. How we are going to do that? How are we going to do it? There are different antibiotics to do that. There are antibiotics that blocks this peptidyl transfer as activity. There are more than one category of antibiotic that blocks it. There are antibiotics that prevent the proper reading of mRNA. So, if the mRNA is read in a, you know, not read properly, then obviously the protein synthesis is not done properly because the tRNA will not be brought properly. There are, uh, there are obviously antibiotics that blocks the translocation part. So, the movement of ribosome along the mRNA is prevented, translocation is prevented sometimes. Okay, so there are antibiotics preventing all these different steps of translation or protein synthesis. They prevent all this. Okay, so now we are going to see the category of antibiotics that we want to discuss. One is this 50 targeting 50s subunit, another one targeting 30s subunit. The one that targets 50s subunit is known as 50s inhibitors, the one target 30s subunits known as 30s inhibitors. 50s inhibitor and 30s inhibitor 50s and 30s inhibitors are involved okay so we are going to see the 50s and 30s inhibitors and what are those inhibitors how they function try to imagine this particular picture in your brain and whatever we are going to discuss you are going to connect yourself with this idea now because when i go to the next slide this image will be gone okay so let's move to this we have 50s subunit inhibitors and there are five different types that we see five antibiotics mainly three types are out there but fives are all listed in here main is the cell the the acronym cell c e l l c for chloramphenicol clindamycin e for erythromycin which are known as macrolids l for lincosamides and l for linzolate these are these four major categories that we see as a 50s subunit inhibitor so how these inhibitors work let's see the first one is a chloramphenicol or clindamycin the job of chloramphenicol or clindamycin is uh, to inhibit the transpeptidation. The formation of peptide bond need to be prevented. The formation of peptide bonds need to be prevented and for that purpose transpeptidation reaction is blocked by chloramphenicol or clindamycin. That is there, the very first step. Remember I told you the third step that, I, that we draw earlier, the transpeptidation is blocked. Erythromycin or macrolids. E, erythromycin or macrolids inhibits the translocation part that the movement of ribosome along the mRNA one codon unit that translocation part is blocked by erythromycin okay so clindamycin chloramphenicol blocks peptidation transpeptidation and erythromycin blocks what uh, 
translocation translocation next is lincosamides here you see the lincosamides that are out there okay lincosamides and linozolids there are also other examples like this uh, that is also in there you can see the lincosamides also a part following the same pattern of behavior like chloramphenicol inhibits the same thing transpeptidation transpeptidation okay this is what they do these are the major type of effects that we see in case of uh, the protein synthesis inhibitors and the protein synthesis inhibition how exactly that is done and the, the next one is the fourth one is linzolid what is the role of linzolid how exactly linzolid uh, blocks it basically we know that the 50th subunit and 30th subunit need to form the 70th transcription initiation complex in order to initiate and start the process of transcription in prokaryotes and linozolid prevent that it also prevents uh, the process of first amino acid attachment first amino acid in prokaryotes are formylated methionine or f met amino acid f met amino acid carried by the trna is blocked by the linzolid that is the role of linzolid okay the first modified trna that is f met trna f met carrying amino acid carrying trna that should be in place where in the p site in the very first amino acid comes in the p site and they form this initiation complex this is blocked by linzolid so these are the 50th subunit inhibitors and their roles the acronym remember c l l cell easy to remember no issue right we all know what cell is we can remember that next is the 30th uh, ribosomal inhibitors not 50th here it is 30th ribosomal subunit inhibitors let me write it 30th inhibitors okay so this 30th inhibitors there are two examples only of a 30th inhibitors tetracyclines and amino glycosides tetracyclines and amino glycosides tetracyclines job is to block the binding of the trna it prevents the binding of the charged trna to the mrna with codon anticodon interaction and amino glycosides inhibit the proof reading activity of the protein synthesis and also helps to misread the mrna uh, it causes the ribosome prokaryotic ri ribosome to misread the mrna as a result wrong trna will be there so as a result initiation will be prevented initiation will not be there initiation will be blocked initiation will be prevented initiation will be prevented and uh, obviously the tetracyclines as we say that blocks the binding of the trna okay that defies the role of the 30th subunits most of the sub 50th subunit inhibitors target 23s ribosomal rna or rrna 23s rrna uh, for the inhibition of transpeptidation because 23s rrna do the job of transpeptidation while here the 70s uh, ribosomal subunits you can see that uh, they inhibit the and proofreading uh, function as well as the new trna binding function inhibited for the 30s among 50s and 30s 50s inhibitors are more commonly used but both of them will cause the cell not to produce enough proteins thus the prokaryotes will struggle living that's how it kills them okay next uh, i'll just give you a mnemonic to understand and revise the 50s inhibitors and 30s inhibitors of protein synthesis in prokaryotes and for that i want you to remember this at 30 by at 30 cell at 50 by at 30 cell at 50 okay so cell instead of s e double l we write c e double l that's the only difference that we have that's the only difference that we have in here okay so we say by at 30 instead of cell we write cell at 50 so among cell at 50 remember this we have c e l l they are all 50s inhibitors and by at 30 we have a and t all 30s inhibitors 
Okay, 30 is inhibitors A for am aminoglycosides, T for tetracyclines. Aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, AT, and cell at 50, C for chloramphenicol, okay, E for erythromycin, L for linzolid, okay, and another L uh, that we earlier saw, linkosamide, linkosamide, linzolid, cell. This is how easy it is to remember uh, the protein synthesis inhibitors in prokaryotes, especially the 50S protein synthesis inhibitors, 50S ribosomal inhibitors, 30S ribosomal inhibitors in prokaryotes. I believe you have a clear idea of understanding the 30S and 50S inhibitors, antibiotic that prevent the prokaryotic cell growth. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.